Hello. Hi, is this Lori? Yes, it is. How's it going? Good. How are you doing? It's Detective Jones from Lakeville Police Department. Yeah, I got you right in my phone, so I always know when you're calling. Okay. Say, so, hey, do you guys have any luck with eating stuff? Um, we're still going through it. Um, we had to get it back okay. pretty quickly, so we basically wanted to get it all copied and then get it back. So we're okay. working on going through phones and computers at this point. All right. So yesterday I did some digging into that property in Dent. I don't know if you've done any digging into that property at all. No, uh, this is the one you told me about before? Yes. So the property that I, that GPS took me to mm -hmm. is not the property of that address. Okay. So I did some digging, and now this is the property that Nicole Rosted has listed as her business address okay. on the Horse Ranch LLC. Okay. Right. So I did some checking. Um, I checked with somebody I know. Um, that kind of helped me dig into this property. This 33371 County Highway 35 in Dent is now owned by a Dennis Arvig. I was able to pull it up on Yahoo satellite map. Okay. Um, and I'm not sure why she would still be using this property, but this was property that was owned by Ross Okay. And uh, this person I know up there said, well, you know, they could be tied together and doing something. Um, this, I'm not going to say who this person is, but, I mean, from what I've been understanding is this guy believes there could be some, some type of, um, these people may be involved in some type of child underground network type thing. Okay. You wouldn't doubt it if this Arvig was. This property, okay, the town of Dent is about 400 people. Yeah, it you looks have, small on the map. Yeah, it's, I think it's about 400 people, if that. So this property is located, according to Yahoo Map satellite, it's located about 11 miles outside of Dent. And if you know that area, <laughs> It's the middle of the boondocks, in the middle of nowhere, okay? When I searched that area, I never found a fire number with the 33371 on it. Because I went both ways on 35. I never found a fire number. This property is located off the highway, I bet, a good half a mile okay. off the highway. There are three different buildings on this property. The first one gets this. You're talking in the middle of nowhere. The first one has a helicopter pad. There is a building with a helicopter pad. Then there is what looks like a large building, um, maybe a barn for horses. Okay. Looks like it's probably fenced in. And then you have a mansion. So there are three different buildings on this property way off the highway, there's no possible way you'd probably even know it was back there. Okay. And it just makes no sense to me, and that this Arvig bought it from the Rossman, apparently. This guy has an open child support, or child uh, custody case, I believe, going on, from what this person told me. They believe he's in a nasty battle with a custody case that was reopened from back at like 05. Okay. But I just, when I saw this helicopter pad, I was like, who the hell in Dent, Minnesota, would have a helicopter pad? Seriously? Yeah, that would be a little unusual, that's for sure. It's very unusual. I have the satellite pictures, so I'm going to email those to you. Okay. But I just want to let you know that this Irving scene sounds like. He's kind of a shady character. He bought it from the Rothschilds. Um, I mean, this guy's assuming he knew them because he's also from the same area they're from. Okay. Um, he's part of the Arvig Communications up there. So he's probably got money too, but apparently the Rothschilds came into a large amount of money 
uh, about a decade ago. And they do own that horse, uh, red horse ranch. Okay. They own that. How, how do you spell the last name Arvig? A R V is in Victor I G. So Dennis Arvig? Dennis Arvig. We were able to find out through Ottertail County that the property um, was listed to him and was not the property I was looking at. The other property, I still can't figure out why GPS takes me directly there. And even Google satellite will take you directly to that other property, but it's on the opposite side of death. Okay. But this McMansion, I mean, the place looks just absolutely huge. And I'll send you the pictures that I took off the satellite off of Yahoo, and uh, it's crazy, but yeah. For somebody to have a helicopter pad, well, it's a quick way to get people out. And you're in the middle of nowhere. Oh, yeah. I mean, you would up out there, on those trees and on. lakes and trees and stuff. Yeah, and you can see on the satellite that they're surrounded by trees and stuff, and the driveway is extremely long. Okay. So nobody would even find you back there. And if they don't have... Like I said, I looked and looked and looked for that fire number. And when you're in the country, you're in rural Minnesota, those fire numbers are the same as your house number. Yeah. So there should have been a fire number, but that was 33371. And I did not find one anywhere. So I don't know if they just don't have one up, if they took it down, or what the hell is the deal. But this place is in the middle of the boondock. And you can tell looking at it, it's a mansion. And you said it's 33371? Yep, 33371, County Highway 35. And you said that Nicole had that listed as her address for a while, right? Had it li she still has it listed as her business address okay. on the Secretary of State website. And that's to the Red Horse Ranch? Yep. No, there's two different. The Secretary of State website, what it was is I looked up for the Red Horse Ranch to see who is listed as the owner, and right underneath that, so when you put that in, it'll um, populate any other businesses with the same name. Okay. Well, right underneath the Red Horse Ranch was a Red Horse Ranch LLC that listed Nicole Rosted as the agent with the business address. She had a Fergus Falls address, I believe, on there, too, but her business address was this address in Dent. And it's still listed as the address in Dent. Okay. And apparently, Arvig purchased this property, like, back in 2012 from the Rob's Okay. But I thought, I thought it was pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, they would have a helicopter pad out in the middle of absolutely nowhere. Right. And this guy, from what some research I was doing, was only paying like $650 a month in child support to his ex. Well, that's an awful. Pad? Yeah, and he's got a helicopter pad on the mansion. <laughs> interesting. Yeah, very interesting. He's making money somewhere. But, you know, I'm sure he's probably heir to the Arvig Communications you know, up there, but I don't know how much money that place has either. Right. So they to only be paying 650 bucks a month in child support to live in a mansion, a helicopter pad. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, and considering, I mean, even if you look at, you know, the the decree that happened with um, the Rockies, I mean, Sandy was paying 1000 towards five kids, and it's not like yeah. he was making a ton of money. Exactly, Say, when is Sam supposed to be coming back, the expedition? Uh, I don't know. Um, you know, they, the, our county contracts to have that done. Um, so I'm assuming it will be sometime in the near future, not exactly when. Or not exactly okay. sure when. They don't, uh, I don't really have that information at all. Uh, okay. But she will be back, you know, at some point. Yeah, that's what I heard. But I, I don't have any exact dates at this time, and it could be, you know, the, if, if they're contracting out to some other company, that company is arranging and hasn't even finalized it yet themselves. So. Okay. Uh, well, DD um, hasn't been apparently. DD doesn't seem real nervous about anything. 
she made a comment to my friend that, um, you know, boy, I have a lot of stuff on my computer and phone. But she has not, you know, bitched or complained that you guys came in and did anything. She has not brought it up. She didn't seem really happy when we were there, that's for sure. Well, yeah. And at first she said it was, you know, she told my friend that the only thing she was mad at was the invasion of privacy. Well, like I told my friend, I said, you know what? She isn't saying anything because she's scared you guys are going to find something. If she was innocent, she'd be bitching up a storm that you guys came in and right. took all of her shit. I know Dee Dee well enough to know that. Right. She'd be bitching up a storm. Well, so she's been very quiet. Let me ask you along those lines. I mean, this, obviously I'm thinking back a couple of years now, but... Um, you know, when the girls first went missing, so that was the 19th of April, you know, the evening of yep. the 19th of April. And okay, and you know what? That was another thing I was going to tell you. I think I've got the timeline figured out when we interviewed. Okay. okay. I believe I had gotten a call that night that they were gone, and that was a Friday night. And things have just been triggering memories for me when I read stuff. You know, read through these stories and everything else. And I actually talked to Trish, and I think I got the timeline figured out. So they went missing Friday night. They called me on Saturday. Okay. The next day. Because we tried to set up the interview for Saturday, but we could not find a photographer that would work the weekend. Okay. We did not interview them till Monday morning. Okay. My husband was home during that time, too, when we were trying to get everything figured out. Okay. So between, I think it was between Saturday and Sunday that we had talked on the phone, but we couldn't find, it was either Sunday or Monday we did the interview, we couldn't figure that one out, but I know that first day... We spent all day trying to figure it out, and Trish could not get a cameraman to work that Saturday. We know that for a fact. Okay. But we can't. We couldn't remember if it was Sunday or Monday that we did the interview. Okay. Now, when this all happened, and the girls called you, and then you called Trish, is that right? Yep. Okay. Had Trish ever heard about this story before that? Yeah, she had heard about it. They had actually. Um, Fox Nine had actually. Um, then down to, um, well, no, I should say that was after the girls had disappeared. I don't know that she heard about it before they disappeared, other than just, you know, her and I are friends as well, so, mm -hmm. you know, she I probably had probably brought it up to her, because I know I had talked to her about other Carver County cases, or Carver County cases that I was working on. She knew about the Carver County corruption blog. You know, once I got involved with those people down there, Sam didn't come into the picture out until after I had been involved with the Carver County cases for a while. Well, yeah, I mean, it, from what I can tell, it kind of seems like she sort of ended up involved with that because she reached out to Dale. And yeah. Dale seemed to be fairly involved with a lot of the cases that were going on in Carver County, or at least was aware of them. Yeah. But we still, you know, I've talked to Angela, I've talked to Trish, I've talked to Leah. You know, we still could not figure out where Dee Dee actually came from, but she immediately threw herself at Sam and attached herself to Sam. Okay. Well, I mean, it seems you know, And I don't know if it was because Sam, there was money there or what it was. Well, I mean, but from what you're, you're telling me, Sam went directly from here to Dee Dee, you know. Um, you know oh, yeah. That's I have she no, went straight I have, away. You said absolutely. That. I would bet my life on the fact that Sam and Dee Dee took those girls and hit them right away. Okay. I have no doubt in my mind, Jim, that Dee Dee is just as involved as Sam okay. in hiding those girls. In fact, you know, I was talking to a girlfriend of mine, and I said... The one thing Sam always said is that she lost all of her friends after her divorce. She had absolutely nobody other than this Carver County group right. to support her. That her coworkers, none of them were ever close because she was always, 
you know, working with this one and then working with that one. She never knew who she was working with. She had one friend that she stayed with occasionally down in um, Phoenix. I think it was Phoenix where she was often at. Other than that, but it wasn't somebody that would really support her and what was going on. So she had no support at all. But Dee Dee was there like instantly. And I don't think she even knew Dee Dee that long before I met her. Well, when did you first meet her? Do you remember? I met her, I think, for the first time at one of Leah Danowitz's um, court cases down in Carver County. Right. Sam showed up, and I think Sam, I think that might have been the first time Sam had ever actually met Leah. Right. And she um, had found the Carver County corruption page. And that's where she, you know, met some of the people through there, you know, and then adding them on Facebook and talking with them and stuff. Okay. In fact, now, Cassandra didn't have Michelle McDonald as an attorney right away. She had a different attorney. Yeah, I think but actually Michelle was like her fourth attorney. Yeah, by the time we all met her, she was working with Michelle McDonald. Okay. Do you think she met Dee Dee through yeah, Michelle? Have, or what? Do you think she met Dee Dee through Michelle? I don't think so. I think Dee Dee met Michelle through Sam. Okay. Dee Dee was involved in, um, I think it was Stacy Pinsky, when I told you about the last time I talked to you. Yeah. Dee Dee was involved in her court case. And as far as I can remember, you know, she claimed to be an advocate. She never used that word until after I had stated that I had been an advocate, you know, working with families since 1998. And then Dee Dee suddenly, you know, started telling everybody she was an advocate. But I think Stacy's case, as far as I know, was the only custody case that Dee Dee had even involved herself in, only because I think she was already friends with Stacy. Okay. Is that and what kind of brought her towards these... helping all these people? I mean, I can't... Everybody else I've met well, with, it seems like there's they've they've had issues with family court themselves, and Dee Dee doesn't appear to have that that background. No, Dee Dee doesn't have that background. She's married to her husband; they have two kids, and but she knew so much about. I mean, she just acted like she had tons and tons of experience with kids that were well, even after the girls left. She had tons and tons of experience with runaways, uh-huh. you know, with with families whose children, you know, were going through all these custody issues. And she was 100% behind the fact that these girls were better off on their own. Okay. Well, I mean, if, if Dee Dee met Michelle through Sandy, how did it end up being that Dee Dee ended up being her campaign manager? What's that? Well, Dee Dee ended up being um, Michelle's campaign manager when she was running for Supreme Court. Yep. You know, I mean, that would suggest yeah, there had to be some level of trust there for sure. Yes. No, I have no doubt that Dee Dee met Michelle through Sam. Okay, so that would have been in 2013. Yep. Okay. Yep. And it was probably, you know, if I remember back, I would almost have to pull up Leah's face or her um, court case because it was there was one I went to I might have to see if I've got any old calendars there was one of Leah's court cases that I went to where I met Sam for the very first time I know it was at the courtroom upstairs in Perkins courtroom okay I think she's only had a couple of hearings since that time but it would have been you know within probably a couple months of when the girls disappeared. Okay. Did you ever talk with Michelle much during all this stuff going on? A uh, little bit here and there, not really. I mean, I know she has this group where she hosts oh. meetings and stuff like that. I just wonder if you ever attended any of those or anything like that. What's that? Well, I know she had this um, um, group, I guess, where she kind of discussed uh, you know, like family court issues and stuff like that. Yeah, I actually attended um, one of those. 
and they have this Bonnie Roy. The woman is a whacked out. She's also a friend of Dee Dee's. Um, and the woman is whacked. She has this big long story that she got totally screwed over in her divorce. And I didn't trust her from the get go, so I went and pulled her files down at Carver County. And she didn't get screwed. She was the least. She got, she, yeah, she did not get screwed at all. She just thought because her husband had money before she met him, she should get half of his money when she divorced, when they got divorced. Okay. The woman is completely whacked out. But she ended up speaking at one of these meetings, and I basically looked right at everybody and said, if Bonnie Roy is the type of person you're having run these meetings, I want nothing to do with me. The woman's whacked. Okay. And Dee Dee flipped out on me. I had actually met Dee Dee and I think Angela in, um, actually I went to two meetings. Because I met Dee Dee and Angela in Dassel and rode with them down to the first meeting, and Dee Dee totally flipped out on me on the way back. And I basically told her, you need to shut the fuck up before I slap you. It was that bad. I mean, the woman was absolutely psychotic. And I told Angela, I will never ride in a car with Dee Dee ever again. And she was going off constantly about Sam's girls and how they had to disappear and all these other cases, how all these women were losing all this money. I mean, it was just absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. And so I think I went with Angela to another meeting, but Dee Dee did not ride with us to that one. Because <laughs> I would tell her, I said, I will only go or she doesn't go. And that second one, I think, is where Bonnie Roy actually spoke. And I was like, seriously, guys, if you're going to let somebody like Bonnie Roy be in charge of this stuff, I'm done. And that's that was it. I never went back. Okay. Uh, Those were down in the city somewhere. But that's kind of how I got to know Angela a little bit, you know, just talking to her and stuff. And then we, you know, became Facebook friends and stuff. And she's not, um, you know, she's got two kids, and I think she went through a custody battle with her son. But um, she's a licensed psychologist. She works in the field. Her husband's an attorney. You know, she only, she's told me before, she only deals with Dee Dee because Dee Dee is her neighbor and her da- their daughters are friends. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've talked to Angela once on the phone. Yep. yep. She said she did talk to you. you know, and that, so she was the one that, you know, let me know that Dee Dee's house was being searched and what Dee Dee said, you know, and stuff like that. She's. Yeah, like she said, no, she's guilty. She needs to go down for it. Okay. So I, I trust Angela with my life. Same with Dale Nathan, that guy, he may not have told you everything you wanted to know, but he's not a liar. Well, like I said, Dale I, from, not a liar. I, I can understand Dale Nathan's perspective a little bit. I mean, I understand he's he's on a mission of what he's trying to do with reform. Yep. And yep. he's trying to get the story out because he thinks that there needs to be reform, and he's trying to tell me, he tells me some things about everything because he's, number one, trying to protect, I, I think, um, the girls a little bit, but he also wants the story yeah. to get out. Well, Stacey Pinsky has a court hearing on her case. It's either, I didn't look it up, but it's either this week or next week, mm-hmm. and apparently Dale and Dee, Dee are both going to be with her in court. Okay. So, but I don't know what day it was. And, uh, yeah, so the one thing Angela told me is supposedly, well, Dee Dee told her that supposedly Michael is calling Dee Dee now every day crying about this Jack guy. Okay. And it's like bullshit. They wouldn't be, he, Michael wouldn't be crying about this Jack guy. I've met Michael enough to know that Michael would be taking revenge and he'd be calling you. That's exactly what I told Angela. I said no. That's a setup to try to make Michael look innocent because I am, Michael's the one that Sam was talking to telling him about horses and a pastor. Michael knows everything. I have no doubt about that. Michael's the one that brought her money when every time she needed money. I don't know where the hell he gets all of his money from. But I said, no, Michael would be calling Detective Drone in and telling him everything about Sam and where those girls are if Michael was upset about this Jack guy. Hmm. This Jack guy is a co-worker. I have no doubt whatsoever 
that that's a setup to get Michael off the hook. Sam would do anything for Michael. But Sam I have no doubt that Michael were together before the divorce ever happened. Sam never mentioned anything about Jack to you at all? Never, ever. I mean, that's a name that was new when that came out, as far as you know, right? Yeah, he doesn't even know who this Jack guy is. Supposedly, Dee had never even known this Jack guy. Sam told Dee Dee everything. Dee Dee's the only one that Sam talked to about everything. Hmm. I mean, I knew she was lying to me and keeping stuff from me, but it was like, you know, I don't know what she's going through. Had I lost my kids, I'd have gone nuts. Yeah. You know, so it was like, you know, whatever. I can't judge somebody who just lost their children because I can imagine. I've got five kids of my own. You know, and I just imagine. So, you know, so I didn't judge her. It wasn't until after that I, I mean, and I knew she wasn't being honest with me. I'm a trained interrogator. You know, I knew she wasn't telling me everything. Yeah. You know, now I have no doubt. I mean, all the pieces of the puzzle fit for me. Did you? You know, why she, she was on a phone almost 24-7. And it was either Dee Dee or Michael and occasionally Michelle. Yeah, and you said usually she was on drop phones to do that, right? Where she'd go to Walmart oh, yeah. and buy new ones. Yep. She'd go to Walmart and buy them, and, you know, she'd restack the cart or however you do it. And then the next thing you know, she's throwing that phone out and just buying a new one with a new number. Hmm. Um, did you go to, you said you went to some of uh, Sam's court hearings, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Did you ever talk to Michelle or anything while you were at any of those hearings? Uh, yeah, a little bit. I was at the one where Michelle was actually arrested, and as was Fox 9. Yeah. They were actually going to do um, an interview of Michelle and Sam, and then everything went haywire when that psycho judge started pulling the shit he pulled. I mean, I, that guy is corrupt as hell, that I can tell you. I was in that courtroom. I've heard that man. And I've never in my life, in all the years I've been an advocate, I have never seen judges do the things that man did. Yeah, and I'll be honest with you, I mean, and I've told you this before, I mean, I, I stepped into this case way after the beginning. Um, yeah. You know, I was kind of far behind, so I don't know, you know, I wasn't present by any means in the courtroom when any of that stuff was going yeah. on. And I have there you know, are some four, knowledge as far as all that yeah, goes. There are 4,000 orders attached to that case. I have read those case files. I have read the stuff that man did. He's insane. The guy should have been thrown in prison for some of the stuff he did. That's why there needs to be judicial accountability. No doubt about it. I've been involved, you know, as an advocate, like I said, since 98, and I've never seen anything so horrific as right. I have with this judge. And I think that's where Sam gets the backing is because you, can, you can't lie about those orders. You can't lie about that shit. No, I mean, that's all a matter of public record. If you want to research it, you can find it. Exactly. You know, and I've got, she's got boxes. My God, I think she had 14 cardboard boxes full of files when she was at my house. Oh, I, yeah, I don't doubt. Um, yeah, there were know. at least 14, if well, not more. If I recall correctly, by that point in time, you know, their their divorce proceedings were going on two years by that point in time. Yeah. That's how yep. long they had this, this, this convoluted this case is, or that divorce had been at, to that yeah. point. Yeah, it already been divorced. She already had custody. She was living in the home. But I have no doubt, you know, Michael claims, the reason it was reopened is Michael claimed that he thought he was signing um, paperwork for the business. Oh, you mean David? When he signed it. And so that's how it got reopened, is because he claims that Sam had a pile of business paperwork on the top and a signature page on the bottom, mm. and got him to sign that signature page, which was actually the divorce, the signature page for the divorce. Uh -huh. That's how he got it reopened. I believe that. I believe she did that. Okay. I've always had my doubts when she said, no, no, no. Because just things she said, I believe her and Michael were together when that happened already. Okay. Because when he was at my house and he was drinking, he made comments, y'all, they've been together for years already. Really? Hmm. Well, if you'd been together for years, then you were together when she was with David. Right. Because 
that's when they finally had to admit to me that they were in a relationship. Because I was like, oh, well, since you two, you know, just giving them shit. Since you two aren't in a relationship, Michael, you can sleep on the couch. Oh, yeah, right. Ha, ha, ha. No, they slept in a twin bed in my spare bedroom. Right. So, yeah. And yeah, like I said, you know, and, and the more the more I read, the more I see things or things trigger little memories. You know, it's like, yep, no doubt. Right. But I do have to wonder about this place in Dent and this Dennis Arvig, and if him and the Rothschilds don't have something going on. Right. I don't know. You know, I've got you know people telling me too. You know, it's the whole underground kidnapping or you know hide kids divorce custody thing. Well, there there are, I mean, if you go online and look, you can find places that that's what they do, is hide kids. And there's a lot of people, I can tell you right now, especially a couple of uh, a couple of uh, Star Tribune guys that believe it's an entire network, too. Um, yeah, I, I'm sure uh, they're, they're doing their research as much as we are. Um, yep. Working on and then I see a helicopter pad, and I think, how quick? Do you guys ever find out how Sam ever got to Florida? You know, I promise she's not, as far as I know, talking. I mean, I haven't actually been able to even try and talk to her because she's in Florida. And, yep. You know, I, I'm not there. You to find out how the hell she got to Florida. Yeah, you know, the, the funny thing is one thing people talk about quite a bit is how tightly regulated the airline industry is. Yes, I would and say that's true unless you work in it. She's a yeah, she's such a paranoid person. Though I don't see her going out in public. So, but I am at my appointment. I'm going to have to go. Let me know if you need anything. If I can help anyway. Uh, certainly. I uh, appreciate your call. And if you think of anything else, feel free to give us a call back. Okay. Yep, I will do that. Right, thank Thanks. you. Good luck. Yep. Bye.